I'm and Kobe. Yeah. And we're here at the Media Center with Luis Pencavel, and we're here to talk about just being a producer. So, Luis, can you tell us what the different jobs it takes to actually produce a show? Depending upon where you are, there's a totally different answer. If you're here at the Media Center or any small market, you do a gazillion jobs. You do all the jobs. So you can do the research and planning, which means just sitting at your computer and reading things. It means going out and interviewing people. You can do the shooting, that, which means arranging for the shoot, going out on location. Quite often at the media center, it means you're the person with the camera, so you're actually doing the shooting. Quite often, you're, you're shooting and interviewing at the same time. So you're doing all the on-camera interviewing and then the editing. Um, if you're really good, which I'm not, you also do like special effects and, and, and final touches like that. So you do the whole thing. Um, why would it be different depending on where you are? Do when you're somewhere else, do other people do the different jobs? Yeah, that's a really good question. Because I've worked in bigger markets, and the bigger the market, the smaller your role. So if you're in a bigger market, especially if it's a union station, you, another person has to shoot it, another person has to edit it, and so forth. And as producer, you, all you can do is oversee them. You have a writer and a this and that. What's kind of cool about being a smaller station is that you can do all that yourself. Mm, that's cool. So you talked about all these different jobs. Um, what's the best part for you of being a producer? You know, I keep asking myself that, and I, I don't know the answer yet. I think the best thing is that they're all there, and so there's an infinite variety. So I don't think I would want to do any one of those over and over and over again. Um, I really like the conceptualizing, you know, um, the planning, the wh what are we going to do with this? What are we going to make of this story? How are we going to make it cool? How are we going to communicate what we have to communicate? But then it's really fun meeting people and getting out on location when you're shooting because you are there and then the camera's rolling and there's a little bit of kind of, you know, buzz about that. So that's, that's kind of nice. But then the editing, I can just sit for hours and the clock will just be ticking and I'll realize, oh my God, I've been in here for hours because that's when you're putting it all together. And they're totally different. So I really like the variety. You sound like you really enjoy it, but it sounds like also a very hard job. Why would you decide to become a producer? Well, I, I, I would, for the reasons I've said, for all the things I like about it, that clearly outweighs the, the downside. Why I decided was totally by accident. I was in college and I was a drama major, which was great fun, but I didn't want to do that for a living. And my parents really wanted me to go to graduate school and get this thing over and done with. So I tried to choose, I tried to find something I could commit to without committing. Because I didn't want to close off my options. I didn't want to say, I'm going to do this, which means, oh, I can never do that, that, and that, and that for the rest of my life. So I remember looking through these books and seeing something that said at Stanford, communication. And I thought, wow, that sounds really vague. That's what I want to do. <laughs> and so it turns out they had a program in film and broadcasting, which sounded kind of cool. And then I came and went through the program. Um, and, and even then, I was kind of back and forth and back and forth. And that was really telling at the time, because when I look back, that was like a, I don't know if it's a red flag, a green flag, that, that was telling me that I really wanted a job with a lot of variety. And so fortunately, it just led me in what I think is the right direction. So you said that you don't, you don't want to have a lot of commitment, but... Producing a show, that's a lot of cr commitment. So what really inspires you to create these shows? No, that's a really good question. I, I think I am quite committed to the show. I didn't want to be committed to something that was narrow, like I'm going to sit and edit something and, and all, nothing else, or, or you know, be an engineer or whatever else. I, I, I didn't want to be committed to something narrow, but I think it is important to be committed to this show. But your question was what inspires me to do the show? On the rare occasions when I've been allowed to choose, that's wonderful. I, can, I, I gravitate to things that I care about. Most of the time, um, if I'm choosing a subject that, that I really care about, that means I have to go out and get the money. And that's probably the only job that I really don't like is fundraising. So instead, if I work for somebody like the Media Center or I worked at, at commercial stations in San Francisco or PBS, usually I'm handed a subject. And sometimes I'm handed a, a general category, like um, the very first thing I did when I was an intern was do something on aging. So then within that, we had to find something that was, uh, you know, kind of a, a good angle. Um, here at the Media Center, a lot of times people will come and say, we want to do a film on da 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 so the subject is there. So that's kind of an unanswer because it's all over the map. 
what would you do if you didn't want to do a certain show? Did you just have to do it, or did you have an actual choice? That's a really good question. I don't think I've ever had one that I really didn't want to do, and that's not just weaseling out of it. I'm be actually being honest. I have had some that are on topics that are really boring. I won't mention them here, but it, it does become kind of a challenge. How can I take this material that would put people to sleep in a heartbeat and actually make it interesting? And so you can turn it into something that's, that's, that's fun. Well, then how would you do that, turn it interesting? Well, usually um, I find something in it that I like. Or for television, television is a very kind of heart medium. It's not dry, so you've got to find something that somebody loves. It, at the very, very least, you interview somebody who loves that dry material and say, why do you like that? You know, what turns you on about it? And when you can get into kind of the emotional content that somebody somewhere feels strongly about it, that's usually an in for me. So you, you're you also an, a very experienced show host. Which do you prefer being, a host for a show or a producer? Do you know the book and movie Sophie's Choice? Uh, no. It's a, 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 a mother has to choose between her two kids. Mm -hmm. I, and in the end, it, it, everybody goes away saying, which one would I choose? Which one would I choose? I feel the same way, because I love them both equally. I, it would be really hard to say. <laughs> Sounds like a very interesting movie. Um, they're, they're two very different jobs. So how did you decide to become a host and a producer? I, we already know how you became a producer, but if you've already a producer, why would you want to become a host? I, again, I kind of fell into that. I was producing stuff here at the Media Center. And uh, I, can't, I'm not, I can't remember what, what, what somebody said, oh, why don't you host a show? I think that was it. We, we started doing a show of, uh, about local people who live in Menlo Park. And then somebody said, why don't you just host it? So I kind of jumped on it. And I had done theater, and I thought it might be kind of fun. And I tried it out, and I really liked it. Um, but you're right, they're very, very different. One, when you're producing, you're dealing with the talent who, and trying to get them to do what you want. And then when you are hosting, you've got somebody else who's dealing with you <laughs> that you have to please. So they're, they're quite different. So how do you choose ideas and different ideas and different people for a show that you produce? As I said, that varies a lot. Um, when I was doing, I did a series for years here, um, a series of interviews with people who live or work in this area. And I would just kind of uh, read, talk to people, and whatever sounded interesting, I'd bring them on. But I also really like to do pre-interviews because some people can be um, have very little to say but be really engaging about the way they say it. And some people can have a lot to say but can't really say it. So it's really important, I think, to, to screen people. Well, we're almost out of time. So for anyone that's watching that might want to be a producer or maybe in the future just does become a producer and they don't even know what it is like you did, do you have any advice? Well, obviously, the, the, the Nike Just Do It is a good one. Uh, and you can do that because you have all these programs. Uh, probably the best advice is to try all the little pieces because if you're a producer and you've never shot anything, actually if you're shooting something and you've never edited, if you're an editor and you've never interviewed, you're a little bit handicapped. If you know them all, you know what it's like to be in those shoes, that really helps. Okay, well we're here with Louise Pencavel at the Media Center and thank you for watching. Thank you. Goodbye. So, how did the interview go for you? Uh, I think it went quite well with you.